we travel to the University of California at San Diego to learn about the Center for Novel Therapeutics, a building designed for cancer research that blends academic research with private sector support, where they hope to discover new novel therapies and treatments. The center was designed by the architectural firm of Perkins and Will, and it won the San Diego Architectural Foundation's Orchids and Onions Grand Orchid Award in 2020. Well, now's a perfect time to learn about this building since the Architectural Foundation's annual Orchids and Onions event is, is coming up in a couple of months. Let's figure out what makes this building deserve that Grand Orchid Award. And for that, we watch a short video to hear what the jurors thought. We are really happy to present the Grand Orchid Award to a truly grand project, the Center for Novel Therapeutics, designed by Perkins and Will for Biomed Realty. Located in UC San Diego's Science Research Park, it's part of a research hub designed to increase collaboration between academic and industry research with the goal of decreasing the time treatment therapies take to get from the bench to the patient. This thinking outside the box design turns traditional lab design inside out with the laboratories residing on the edges of the building instead of buried deep within it. This inverted design offers researchers views of the campus and generous amounts of daylight. Research wings wrap around the central atrium with a layout that fosters chance encounters and collaboration. Jurors praise the structurally fascinating innovative design that encourages innovation within. They lauded the attention to detail, the patient-centered design, and the building's all-around high performance. They deemed the project elegant and engaging. Congratulations to the Center for Novel Therapeutics. And Perkins and Will, you keep on cultivating more orchids. That is a special building. It's also an easy building to walk around, which gives us lots of different views to sketch from. I've chosen the entry as our focus to sketch because all the elements that make it interesting are right there and it gives us an opportunity to try our hand at linear two-point perspective. The concept of perspective is simple, really, once you get the hang of it. Objects closer to us appear larger and objects farther away appear smaller. And when they get so far away, they seem to vanish. The easiest way to illustrate perspective in real life is to stand in the middle of a straight road. When you do this, you'll notice how the sides of the road and the lines painted on it meet in one spot on the horizon. The center line will go straight for that spot, and the lines on either side will angle in until they intersect. That point of intersection is called the vanishing point. The vanishing point will always be in line with your eye level as you look at something. Eye level line is also called the horizon line in perspective drawings. 
orthographic rejection lines are those lines that recede back to the vanishing point, whether they're above the eye level line or below it. For two-point perspective, there are two vanishing points, and they're far apart. And actually, it comes a little closer to how we really see things. Think of the building as a big box. And I'm going to show this white line to indicate the corner of the building that's closest to us. And then those red line, angled lines are the orthographic projections, and we follow them back till we find the vanishing point. And that helps us establish our eye level line. Those yellow lines are the orthographic projections on the other side of the box. And now you can see both vanishing points and how one set of lines fade to one vanishing point and the other side of the building's lines fade to the other. Here's our photo of the Center for Novel Therapeutics. Let me just show real quick in a demonstration how we would find those points, those vanishing points for the photo. Just like we did in that demonstration video with the yellow lines and the red lines, these orthographic projection lines. We'll just find the major points, the major lines of the building, trace them back, get our vanishing points. There's our eye level line. It's also interesting to notice that the walls of the building that are parallel, for instance, this wall, which is parallel to that wall, they share the same vanishing point. So all the sides of the building that face, in this case, that face west, have the same vanishing point. These sides of the building, that's facing north, they all, sh they all share the same vanishing point. So this big side of the building, vanishing points back here. The, the side of this, the little green cube, do you see they go to the same point? Now that we have our vanishing points located and that eye level line located, I'd like to do a quick demonstration just to show you where we're going with this and how, how this building, which may look a little complicated now, can be broken down into some simple boxy shapes. We're going to start with the outside of this building. And it's just, it's, we'll start with the wall. This is the roof line, and this is that floor line at the second level. Simple box. We'll do the first floor next. Remember, our eye level line is about level with the, with the ground floor, so it's going to look like a straight line. Now, can you see that box sort of floating above the smaller box here? The next thing I'm going to, we're going to walk through is to see how there's actually a box within a box. Now that sounds funny, but when you start to look carefully at the photo, you're going to see that there's a glass box in there. And then we're going to see and locate the funny green floating box. Can you see it? And then we'll add that sidewalk outside. If we're feeling daring, we'll go ahead and do the shape of that, uh, the portion of the building that's right next to it. It's also got sort of a floating second floor. There's a little garden wall. Some building in between with a lot of glass. And we'll start divvying it up. And that'll be our sketch. There's some cool dividing glass in there, and it'll help to give shape to our building. That simple. Let's start by establishing our eye level line. That's just a draw a straight line across the sheet. 
If you want to use a straight edge, you can. And we're just going to establish our two vanishing points and put them far out like that. The next thing I want to draw is that leading edge of the building, the corner of the box. Let's eyeball it. It looks like it's about uh, one third of the way over. So if we just sort of approximate about a third, just draw a straight line like that. If you'll use a little pencil measure, if you will, find the point from your line to your vanishing edge. I'm just eyeballing this, but it looks to me like to my vanishing edge, my vanishing point, that distance is about the same, same horizontally as it is up. So that's kind of the top of our building. You want to double check? You could take our pencil and sort of angle it like that and see if it matches. It looks pretty good. How about a line? Mm, I'd say we're about a quarter of the way up that line. So make a tick mark a quarter of the way. If it's easier, make, make a tick mark halfway up and then break that in half. And that looks to me like uh, the bottom of our building. Now to finish that edge, hmm, looks like its width is not is less than the height, so I'm going to say that it's about like that. We'll keep these lines light at first, and the reason is we're going to draw them, and then as we draw other things in, we're going to test ourselves and see if it looks right. Do we have the proportions right? Right now, this looks a little squat, but it, it may turn out just fine. Now, for this side of the building, I'm going to connect from that dot to the top. Again, if you have a straight edge and you want to use it, go ahead for these early lines. If you don't have a straight edge, the edge of a piece of paper will work. And a straight edge, it's like a ruler, edge of a piece of paper. I'm going to try to um, continue to do mine freehand, just so you understand that it's not perfect. We're not looking for perfection, we're looking for pretty good. How about the width of this long part? Looks like it's not quite two of these. So if I measure this, one, two, it's not quite that far. So I'm going to come back a little. I think it's about like that. And there's the front face. I come over from the edge here a little bit. Just draw a line. Come back from the edge of here a little bit. Draw another line. Actually, go ahead and take that one all the way up. Like that. Keep them light. This one you can go all the way up as well. All right. How about the back side? Go back a little to find the back side of that building. Now let's connect a few of these lines. So to find the side of the building on the first floor, Connect some of these. There, can you see it? Are the two boxes starting to take form? You've got the first floor box and the second floor box. We're going to start to notice a couple things about the box, that upper box. It's it's a little more complicated. This side we're going to leave alone for now. It's solid. Yes, there's this shading material here that you can see through and then this solid piece, but let's focus on this front face. It's got a little thickness here. So draw a second line right there. 
and at the roof edge, it's got a little thickness there. So draw a second line kind of close together. But look what it does here. Like this whole face is actually set back. So what I'd like to do is when we get to this edge, we're gonna we're gonna pick up this line, which you know follows, comes back to our vanishing point. So just make a little line like that. And a line like that. Okay? So that's sort of this it's establishing where this inside face is. That's this, this whole glass thing here. And then this point, go back to that vanishing point. All right, so now we have our outer box and our inner box, of, this is of glass. Can you see it? I feel like I, I don't have them stretched out as much. Should I check some proportions? That's okay. Looks all right. Let's just keep going. I see a little solid piece here. Let's go ahead and, and draw that in there before we, the next thing we're gonna do is that, that floating cube. But I'd like to confirm that we have a few things, the proportions looking okay. So we're gonna put in the floating cube. Um, we're gonna position it based on other things that we've got in here. The right side of edge, excuse me, the left side edge of that floating cube, looks like it happens right about here in between, right about the middle of this rectangle, if you see that. How high is it? Hmm, doesn't go all the way to the bottom and it doesn't go all the way to the top. So can you Take off a line like that and eyeball or take your straight edge. Now we're going to bring that floating box out. Oops, looks a little tall. See how close we are there? Let's bring it down a little. That looks a little better. How wide is it? Looks like it's about as wide as it is tall. All right, and then for the face of it, you know which way it goes, right? It goes back to the vanishing point there on the, on the right. The width of the front face is about the width of this solid face, so we're gonna measure that, measure that. You can eyeball it, measure it. All right, and you see it, it has a little frame around it. It has a frame on four sides, though that bottom side hits, hits a little something. There's a thickened bottom here. How does that look? Good. All right. We can erase a couple of the stray lines. Leave the ones or add ones that help us tell the story. If you want, ever want to confirm a line, take it back to its vanishing point and see if you have it going at the right angle. That's a good way to do it if things are not looking quite right. I think it looks pretty good. What do we want to do next? With sketches, we like to build them up with line and shape, and then we get into detail and tonal value. So staying with the line and the shape, rather than going in and adding detail on the windows, 
Let's add the building portion to the left. Looks like that gap there is maybe a little wider than our little green box. Yeah, a little wider. Maybe we start that the shape right about here. Where's the bottom of this box? Hmm, part way up here, it looks like. And this wall is parallel with that wall, so the bottom of it's gonna go back to this vanishing point, like that. How about how tall it is? Not quite as tall as this. There's another line. This one goes all the way across. It's a window line. And then another one above it. Go ahead and just find the edge where you want the edge of your drawing. About like that. And then it'll help us. There's the bottom of that building floating there, bottom of that box. There's an inner box. We can kind of see through that box, can't we? this little piece right here. It's a wall that's actually out closer to us. It's kind of a curvy, so we're not, it's got an ever so slight curve to it. The bottom of it should relate to that lower vanishing point. Periodically, just look back at your drawing and see, does it look like the photo? Does it look like what you're looking at? I'm gonna draw on just a couple of these other lines and then we'll decide if it's time to ink. How about the sidewalk in? Ooh, this is tricky. Maybe first let's do the bottom of our sketch. Top of our sketch. I haven't drawn this side in because I'm just, I am not convinced I've got the width of this right. Yeah, it is, at least according to one of the sketches. Maybe that helps it. Once I blocked out that portion which is solid, the rest of it looks like it's a little more in proportion. So now I can finish off the edge of our sketch. There's another garden wall over here that we can draw in. All the rest of this stuff, there's a chair um, and some other things that I'm just gonna, I think we should just ignore. But what we can do is try to draw in a little bit of what this sidewalk's doing. Can't quite see, but it's something like that. Let's call it that. All right. Is there anything else you need to do in pencil? Maybe a few more of these windows. We could do a couple of the details in here now. Lightly pencil in some of the ribbing that's happening in here. How about the ribbing that's happening over here? And maybe some that's happening in the glass. There's six can you see that there's six divisions in here? I'm sure they're all equal. So the way we want to divvy those up is if you put an X through that square, you can find its center line. Now here's the more challenging part. You found the center of that. How do we break it into thirds? Hmm. We could 
break it into two again and eyeball it. How about that? One that's a little bit on the side of the center. And once you start to erase your X's, you can see, are they getting smaller? Is the spacing getting smaller the farther away it's going? Great. How about some of the details on the windows? You see how midway up there's one, two, three bays, and then it seems solid below and Mm, broken up a little bit. So so let's take the one right off the top of the green box. There's one a little bit below the green box and above it. And then connect these back to these guys. Because the those bands wrap wrap that little portion of the building. And then about halfway up there's this one. Then looks like this is divided into four equal pieces. So if you can either eyeball it or, or make the X's because they will start getting smaller the farther away they get from you. Once you finish with the, with the pencil work, I'm gonna recommend that we don't continue to use, um, we don't continue to use the straight edge. So it's interesting to note here, I have been, I'm looking at this shiny part right here and at first I thought it was more glazing. I thought it was the top of the windows, but I can see now this is an interesting wood soffit treatment. That is, it's part of the ceiling. It's not part of the windows. So I'd like us to ignore it for just a little bit. We can just put in these vertical windows. Remember, they're going to get closer the farther back they go. We could do the X thing, but I think you're getting the hang of it. Let's Let's just go ahead and, um, let's just go ahead and eyeball it. So bring a line straight down, because this is a concrete portion of the building. And then let's do these, these doors. Let's just say there's an even number of them. Okay. I see some verticals back in this hallway too. Here's something you might want to think about doing. Do you notice that because it's such an interesting part of the architecture, there's those horizontal fins or grill work that's on the side of the building and it, and it creates that interesting intermediate spaces when we saw people standing in there, you could come outside from the from the offices and there's a walkway and you can see through it in the other direction. There's actually a name for this, Brie Soleil. It's a French word meaning sunbreaker. The Brie Soleil is an architectural feature that reduces heat gain within a building by deflecting sunlight. And in this case, makes for the most interesting shadow patterns. How do, we, how do we get those? So there, are, all of those lines are going back to the vanishing point. And what I'd recommend is just on the face of this, let's draw one, two, three of these. Not all the way back, just, just in that part. And then you can start eyeballing them. They're not parallel, they vary ever so slightly. They fan out. And the reason I like to break it up is it helps it, it helps you regulate the angle of them. Let's do the same thing here. I might 
normally not pay much attention to something like this, but because it's an important part of the architecture, I think we should try to document it as best we can while keeping it super simple. If we get too fussy with it, it takes over our drawing. Let's start inking now. I am going to use a fairly thin pen uh, because there's a lot of detail I want to show in this sketch. And we'll start inking the way we initially laid it out. That is, we'll start with the box floating over the box. So here's, here's the upper floating box. When you start inking, I'd recommend not to use a straight edge. Just use the straight edge when, when you're blocking out in pencil. If you try to use a straight edge now, the lines tend to get mm, too much importance, if you will, and then they, uh, they don't have the kind of character that you get when you're drawing freehand. And then we have the little box that it's sitting on. This is a post in the corner. This is a little wall beside it. And then it had the it had the box inside a box. I can't remember. And as you work this way, you the the building starts to become much more understandable. What is this building I'm looking at? Then we put the little cube, little floating cube on. And so while sketching you, um, sometimes it's best to start with the lines and the shapes, the overall lines and shapes. Then we'll get into more detail and then finish up with shade and shadow. So we, we did some of that when we were doing the pencil sketch and now we're gonna we'll follow it up going to pen. So we have the box and box in a box with a box attached. <laughs> now we'll do this floating uh, portion of the building And another advantage to, to doing it this way is um, when you get the major portions done, if you run out of time at any point, you know, it's still a sketch and you can see what you were doing. If you come back to this drawing, you know, weeks from now, if this is all as far as you got, you'll be able to say, I know where I was. because You got, you got the, the major portions blocked out. Now we just work up from there. We can start adding uh, more of the details and make our sketch more convincing because it's such an interesting building. Those, the solar shades, the, the, the horizontal slats that, that um, allowed light to come in, but was able to control the amount of heat gain that might be able to, that would come into the building. We can start putting the window grids on there, inking them in. That gives a lot of character to the building. In our photo, there's a tree here. I'm gonna ignore the tree because I think it maybe confuses what we're looking at a little bit. So we just have to look through the, we have to look through um, the tree to see what the photo is beyond. If you were actually there, you could, um, you could move around a little and see what's beyond the tree, you could position yourself or, or at least just walk over and check where the tree's not in the way. And 
Now, some of these little divided lights in the windows, um, we don't, they're not that noticeable, so we try not to give them too much importance. And then we can uh, put the grids on the glass box there. One of the things that we didn't lay out in our pencil sketch, and actually I, I'm probably going to get the pencil and, and go back and do it, is what's happening, this reflection in the building. See how the, this portion of the building is reflected in that glass wall? At, at first glance, you might have thought, is that building going inside? Is this a portion of the building that goes inside? No, because it's at sunset, we're getting a lot of sort of mirrored reflection off that glass. And so we're gonna give a hint to what's going on there. And I'll show you how we'll do that. And for now, we'll continue with these horizontal window panes. If we were there, we might be able to tell, we can hardly see it in, in this, but there's a glass railing right here. That was one of the other interesting things about the building is that this is actually like an outdoor hallway that has a lot of light filtering through. And you can walk outside the building in that area. You can come around the corner. This is a walkway here. And people can approach these little meeting rooms because that's what these, these little green cubes are. They're meeting rooms. And people can see through them. So if you were maybe having an having a conversation and a few of you wanted to sit down and talk about it, like what you were doing in your lab that day, you could go inside that little room. But I guess what I was getting at is that there's a little glass rail right here that we can barely see, but we're going to, we're going to uh, put it in there because it helps to tell the story. What next? I guess we can put, put these in. Uh, showing where how the the windows are divided on the first floor, and then let's do the horizontal slats of that that brie soleil because you know it's such an important part of the building. If we if we don't draw them in, these look like solid walls, and they're not solid walls. So we're going to find a way to draw them so that they they keep their their openness. I think it's important to put the little verticals. And we'll do those here, and we'll do them here as we saw them. If you see how we have the lines in there, our guidelines. So what I recommend we do is to make these lines pretty quick. Um, if you draw slowly, the ink in your pen will make a nice thick line. But if you draw quickly, it skips a little, as you can see. And it's not, um, it looks a little lighter. I mean, it's hard, hard to control ink. This ink is, it's not like a pencil where you can lighten up. Well, actually, I guess it is like a pencil in that if you go quickly, the ink will skip a little bit and, and it gives a lighter line. And remember these lines fan out. They're not completely parallel. They fan out like, um, like fingers. And these, if I'm finding it kind of hard to go all the way across the it's easy to go across, but my hand tends to flip up a little bit, so you can break them up a little bit. They're not too dark. And then some of the other shade and shadow that we're gonna add is going to help make them less important. Also, we're going to dash some lines because you can see see those things that are happening beyond and we want to draw them in, but we're going to draw them in as dash lines because we're not looking at them, we're looking through that screen at them. 
anything that's through the screen, we want to dash. I see a little bit of this wood up here, that wood ceiling, a bit of soffit, we see it here too. Just a little line of that. Let's now, let's go back, as I mentioned, let's take our pencil and you might want to take your straight edge. I know I said no, no straight edges at this point, but we're, we're doing the pencil. So, so what we're going to do is, is to just lightly indicate where the, sh where the reflections are and they follow the same, as you can see, they follow that same, um, going back to the vanishing point. What the reflection is really picking up um, is the darkness of this overhang. It's picking up the reflection of this box. That's also dark. So let's let's just and we can see the end of the building. This end of the building out here is reflected in here. And it looks like the building, the reflection ends right about, right about there. And so those would be just dash them, dash in a few of the lines. As maybe a reminder for when we get, we get to get to that point. So I think we have the details in, but now let's add some shade and shadow to help this read a little more. What's happening now as our line drawing is, is I feel like this area, uh, th these windows are having as much importance and these windows are having as much importance as some of the other parts and we need them to work as a whole. So let's start shading and texturing in some of these darker areas. And we'll start with the underside of the building here. We're making these horizontal. You can also, if you wanted to make the lines radiate, this is called cross hatching, going in the direction of these other lines, the parallel lines we drew. And the underside of this floating box. We are really worm's eye view for this second story, aren't we? Versus a bird's eye view. Bird's eye view when you can see the tops of the building. Worm's eye view when you see the underside of the building. You see the boxes are starting to float there. I'm also ignoring a little bit the artificial light noticed already that I'm a few things I'm doing for the benefit of the drawing is is ignoring um, you know these these pools of light would be hard to make readable without making the whole drawing a little too realistic it's a sketch so you know there's a looseness to it so we're going to ignore some of those things All right, sometimes I will squint and look at the sketch and see what, what else do I need to make it read a little more as, as we go through this part and, you know, we're starting to add some, some definition. I, might, I think the next thing I'd like to do is add a few extra lines on the screen to show that you can see through the screen. See how you can see that ceiling and that portion of the roof through the screen. But we want to be careful because 
we don't want to make give it too much emphasis so not too many lines and we'll do the same over here it's not as obvious as here but just to reinforce that we can see through it let's add a few extra lines here just to give it a little bit of tint Oops, I think I'm not going back to the vanishing point now when we get into definitely shadowing shading this portion is in shadow and it's darker up at the top so the way that we we do um, we show reflection when we're drawing the glass is they're like a couple of diagonal lines in each in each pane and let's put more of the diagonal lines near the bottom where there's some reflection of the building in there and not so many up near the top do a couple just to say this is glass up here And then here on this side, you use those same diagonal lines to suggest this is glass, but we're going to put more of a mirror in because this is glass and shadow. And then if you again squint or step back a little bit from your sketch, you'll see how it's starting to read a little more. And maybe some reflections up here. I see the cool clouds reflected up in there, but I'm not going to do those because there's no clouds in the sky for me to, um, for them to be understandable of what exactly are we looking at. All right, so we'll do the diagonal lines, but we'll do them closer together because we're seeing that dark area underneath the roof overhang. See, all of these areas can get those diagonal lines because they're all glass. And then we're just I'm saying we're adding a few more to show we're looking at glass and there's something reflected in the glass. show some sort of reflection of that box. It just looks like darker, like a darker rectangle. It's a little confusing in there, so you can uh, feel free to just leave it sort of vague. I see a door in there. I'm going to put a little shadow. I know I'm hopping around here. I'm going to put a little shadow underneath this portion on that vertical wall. Um, this, this is a solid portion of wall too, and it's got a shadow on it. So it's not, it's not window. It's solid. So if we're going to put some sort of shadow on it, we want to make sure that it looks different from the windows. So I'm going to do a little cross hatching, some up and down lines. And I'll do the same here. Even though the sun is, I mean, those lights are shining on that, let's pretend the lights are off. This is what we would see. This is pretty dark. Oh, gosh, and I'm seeing the reflection of those, these same sort of mullions in there, uh, the window. I'm seeing the reflection in the of the windows, in the windows. <laughs> Though it looks like it's one solid piece of glass. I'm gonna put a little more shadow on this side.
and fewer lines over here, just to suggest, well, we've turned the corner. So maybe there's more light here than there is here. We've completely ignored, and we're using our artist license. As I said, we're completely ignoring the fact that this has got a lot of lights on in the inside, and it's even casting light out here onto that soffit. And just so we don't have to explain in our sketch, um, we're ignoring that. How well does that read? Again, squint. Is it telling the story? How does it look? Is there anything else you can add? I think the next thing, let's add some vegetation here. Okay, not the tree. We chose to ignore the tree, but there's a series of little spiky plants and just, um, they're kind of fun to make. Uh, think of them again like fans. Sort of like we had fans over there and there's fans here. So start with the ground and just flick some flicks up. And if you flick up like this, it gives it some character and also just suggests, um, I don't know, vagueness about, um, about the plant material, because there is sort of vagueness about it. We don't want to get too much into the detail of the plants. Otherwise, your eye will go there instead of at the building. And it's something of interest to note is where you want your eye to go is probably where you should put most of your your contrasts or your dark lines and we wanted to describe the box and so we've spent uh, put most of our darkest darks where we want our eye to go what i do some with walkways is i'll make some fast lines across walkways like that to show it's a horizontal surface and then you know it doesn't hurt to uh, to do something similar in these garden areas. You could make some squiggly lines around the perimeter, maybe some some fun lines around like that, just to say, oh, there's some uh, soil, some massing. It's not, it's not perfectly flat. It's dirt, it's ground cover. And it emphasizes that entry walk in there. Maybe put some larger ones, even though they're not there. We could let the plants grow up a little bit. We might make the plants grow up a little here so that some of that we're toning down that big white white wall right there. Because we didn't we didn't put much, we didn't identify what it was. It's not important, it's not part of the building. So we kind of ignored it. The last thing I think we'll do is um, is just give a hint. That there's a building beyond there and it's not like we need to see the building but I really like I'd like to get just something darker back there to to allow this corner of the building to pop a little bit and we're gonna let the ink dry and then we're gonna get out our kneaded eraser again all right I have my kneaded eraser I've left it unwrapped from week to week and if you do that they're still good, you just have to work it between your fingers a little longer. If you don't have a kneaded eraser and you wanna clean up some of these lines on your drawing, you can use the race, any eraser at the end of your pencil. And so I just carefully clean up the lines. If you use an old eraser at the end of your pencil, you get a little what's happening in here. So I tried to erase something in there, a pencil line with an old hard eraser at the end of my pencil and it kind of left a mark. The last few things that we're going to do are going to be just to put some blue on the sky and on the glass where it's reflecting just to help it pop. I'm gonna do a couple of fun little crazy lines in the sky like that, just to say, oh, maybe there were some clouds you, know, you can always add a little bird or two. And and then we're going to um, go ahead and entitle your drawing. This is the Center for Novel Therapeutics. It 
It's at UCSD, La Jolla, August 14th, 2021. You can sign your sketch if you want. I don't usually sign my sketches. They're sketches, um, they're fun, they're, uh, I don't wanna take them too seriously. You can you can sign them if you want to. I'm I'm always about not trying to make these into works of art because that puts a sort of a pressure on them that they have to be better than they are. This is this is more like note taking. I'm I'm documenting what I'm seeing. They don't have to be perfect when it's just note taking. So I'm going to start with a look just slightly on some of these windows. Let's see how you can see through them. This has got so much color on it. And I don't think the windows are actually tinted. It's it's interesting why they're catching so, so much more blue than, say, these in this direction. It could be if, if this is west, um, this is still catching the light from the sunset. And, and this is looking in the other direction where there's less light in the sky. And so perhaps that's why that's... That's a deeper blue. It's actually a beautiful, uh, beautiful blue. As you're doing this, you might see areas where you want to add a little more uh, tonal value. I feel like this area up here could get some of the reflections. You don't have to keep them too light. You see how I'm kind of going straight with this. There's something there. There's some vertical lines that were happening in that reflection. So I just added a couple of those. But it's interesting how the blue, and I'm going to keep the blue very light down here. Um, it's interesting how the blue reflection on the glass helps the building to read. That's a unique green that the uh, architect selected for that, that glass box. It's actually painted glass. Um, and because it's so unique, I'm not gonna try to get out a green pencil. I mean, I'd want, I, if I did it, I would wanna try to capture it, capture the color more exact. And um, I don't know if that's possible. I'm gonna put a little more uh, color blue on where the glass is reflected. And now the sky. I try to make it um, uniform. You can go horizontal the way I'm doing. You can uh, perhaps go vertically usually there's the color variation it's like lighter near the ground and it gets darker as it goes up and so that's why i usually like to do horizontal lines because then i can make some of the ones the horizontal lines the blue lines up near the top darker if i choose you can also do the reverse and make it darker below you can Take some blue and add it to your fun lines, though. I'm kind of sorry I just did that. And you're done when you're satisfied with your sketch. So a couple things to keep in mind. Center for the for Novel Therapeutics. Two-point perspective, a box in a box in a box. We found our vanishing points, our, our eye level line. We learned how to, so we learned how to draw in two-point perspective. We learned reflection on the glass, um, how we gave this uh, some real depth in there. If you have a green pencil and you wanna just splash some green on the ground, there we go. How'd you do?